What's going on, U.S. History people? We got video number 19 for you today. This one is on the Missouri Compromise, Manifest Destiny, and the Mexican-American War. So much going on in this video. So let's start off talking about the Missouri Compromise, also known as the Compromise of 1820. So do its favor, circle Compromise of 1820, because you could see it as either one. So some background info or historical context for this compromise. There are 22 states in the country. 11 are free and 11 are slaves. So there is a balance between free and slave states. Missouri, pictured here in yellow, they are going to apply for statehood in 1819 from the Louisiana Territory. If you remember this territory that was purchased in 1803 by Thomas Jefferson. So they're going to apply for statehood and they're going to apply as a slave state. And this would upset the balance of free and slave states. So the region that will be opposed to this is the North because they will be outnumbered in the Senate. All right, so moving on, a little more background information that we need to know about the Missouri Compromise, sometimes referred to as the Compromise of? 1820. That's right. Is our man Henry Clay helped to mollify this dispute. So as we're seeing, there are members of Congress who are working very hard to try and prevent conflict in the United States to develop these compromises to promote peace and really stability between both um, influential parts of the country the non-slave holding north and the slave holding south. So three parts of the compromise of the Missouri Compromise or the Compromise of 1820 we need to know is first is that Missouri will be added to the Union as a slave state. One thing we'll see, Missouri is above what line, Mr. Norris? 3630. So an important line to understand this time period and the division between the north and the south, slavery and free. Also we'll see to keep the balance of power specifically within the Senate, we'll see Maine will be added as a free state in the north and the third part was all future states in Louisiana Territory above the 3630 line would be free, below would be slaves. So we'll see Missouri kind of goes against that, is above the 3630 line, but is the exception to the rule. So what is the impact of this compromise? What are some effects? Well, in the short term, we're going to have the balance remained at 12 free and 12 slave states. So there is an equal balance between the number of free and slave. States will be admitted in alternating free and slave state in the short term. So one year you may have a free state and the next year you will have a slave state. This will last for 34 years until it's overturned by this guy, Stephen Douglas. And the big thing to think about for this unit, as the U.S. expands beyond the Louisiana Territory, slavery will become the number one issue. It is by far the number one issue and it is tearing the country apart. And new compromises in court cases would attempt to address this issue of slavery. And ultimately, all of them will fail because we will have the Civil War in 1861. All right, so moving forward is a phrase, a term you have to know for the study of American history, specifically the time period we're studying where we're moving west as nation is manifest destiny. Please star, circle, underline, highlight this phrase, something you have to know. And what is manifest destiny? Well, it was a belief that it was America's God-given right to expand from coast to coast. So when we're saying manifest destiny, it's almost um, Americans saw this at a time of almost a religious calling that the American government and the American people must control this region. Now, the only issue is this. Mr. Norris, is this land completely open? No, it's not. There, some of the land belonged to Mexico, and Native Americans were living on a lot of this land, too. So as we move west, we're going to see this is going to cause conflict at times. So what do we need to know? Where did this term come from? Well, it was created by a guy by the name of John O'Sullivan. You see a picture of him in the top right here. He's the one who really develops this term, and it becomes popular around this time period. So what time period are we associating with this? We have to understand it's the 1840s through the 1850s, our pre-Civil War kind of antebellum time period, and roots are in the Louisiana Purchase. So again, as the United States purchased that huge chunk of land that, that doubles the size of the country, the question becomes, what do we do with that land? And Americans want to move west. So some key things to associate with Manifest Destiny, think of the development of Texas as a state, and eventually the Mexican-American War will come about which will help to add more territory into the what we consider the continental United States. So jumping over to Texas, we have this dude pictured here, Santa Ana. He was the leader of Mexico something like a dozen different times, and Texas will break away from Mexico under his leadership. So in 1836, Texas will declare independence from Mexico, and in 1844, the presidential campaign in the U.S. focused on Texas. The Democrat James K. Polk was all about annexing Texas. In 1845, shortly before James K. Polk becomes president, 
Under the current president, John Tyler, Texas was annexed by the United States. And the boundary was not settled between the U.S. and Mexico. So there were conflicting claims between the U.S. and Mexico over the Texas boundary. And this will help lead to the Mexican-American War. So, as the title said, this is a war between the country of Mexico and the United States of America. And some causes we need to know, obviously, as Mr. Norris already talked about, is Texas is going to be a huge issue here. So, if we look at this map, Mr. Norris, you want to explain what's going on here? Yeah, so this is the Louisiana Territory in green. This is what Texas originally claimed as its territory. You can see it's a lot bigger than the present-day boundaries. And then over here, from California over to... New Mexico and Arizona. This is the Mexican session, which the U.S. will gain after the Mexican-American War. So this Texas boundary issue is because of this area right here, especially down here in southern Texas. Mexico claimed this area of land right there. So as Mr. Norris just pointed out in that map, geography, very important. One of the causes of war between the United States and Mexico over the issue of land and claiming certain areas. So Texas boundary, very important. This phrase, American blood on American soil. Mr. Norris, do you want to explain more about this as well? Yeah, so James K. Polk claimed that American blood was spilled on American soil when they were attacked by Mexican troops, but that land was on the contested territory. So although American soldiers did die, there is a question as to whether or not it actually belonged to the United States. Some people, such as Abraham Lincoln, argue that it did not belong to the United States and it was not on American soil. All right, so some major effects, impacts you really need to know about the Mexican-American War. The first and really the biggest one we need to know is U.S. gains in Mexican cession. So a huge amount of territory the U.S. will take after the war with Mexico. Also, kind of our lead up to the Civil War, many of our famous or infamous um, Civil War leaders on both sides will really get their um, experience in combat during the Mexican-American War and kind of set themselves up for leadership positions in the American Civil War. We'll see the U.S. will own land from the Atlantic to the Pacific, so really kind of coming to fruition that manifest destiny that the United States government will control all territories between both oceans. And third, we have debates over whether this land would be free or slave. So this continual debate going from the very beginning of this course is as the United States continues to expand west, takes more territory, the question becomes, will that territory be free or slave? And depending on which direction the United States goes, will shift the balance of power within the federal government. All right, so what are the impacts of manifest destiny? In a couple words, it's westward expansion will lead to debates over slavery. If you take nothing else away from this video, please understand that. So the impacts of manifest destiny and Native Americans, they will lose land and were pushed further west. Eventually, as we'll see in the 1880s, they'll be pushed onto reservations. The issue of slavery will be the number one issue prior to the Civil War and the debate over whether land should be free or slave. All right, so let's quickly recap what we need to know from this video. First, Missouri Compromise had how many parts, Mr. Norris? Three. Three parts, Missouri Compromise, be aware of those. Impacts of the compromise and understanding that there are people in Congress in the American government who are trying to prevent conflict, trying to develop compromises for both sides. Manifest destiny, we know, is a phrase that's very important at this time period as well, covering land between the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean under the control of the United States. We know that Texas will eventually be annexed into the United States, but over the dispute between Mexico and its borders will eventually lead to war between both countries, ultimately ending up with the Mexican-American War and its impact, specifically American gaining more control as a result of the Mexican session and this continual debate over should this new territory be free or slave. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to you back for video number 20, more conflicts prior to the Civil War. Thanks for watching. Best of luck and have a good day.